This is a volcanic eruption on one of the uninhabited islands in the Kingdom of Tonga. It was detected by a satellite on January the 15th, 2022. NASA researchers estimated the explosive force at 10 megatons, which is more than 500 times as powerful as the nuclear bomb dropped on Hiroshima. The blast was heard as far away as Alaska. The eruption released so much ash that it blanketed the nearby island. Islands. Hundreds of homes were demolished, over a hundred people were reported missing, the water was heavily polluted, and there was nothing left for people to drink. However, it's hardly surprising that the volcano became active. It's erupted regularly over the past few decades, but none of its previous eruptions can be described as large-scale. It just spewed magma and steam. A really powerful eruption occurs every thousand years. In this video, you'll find out why was the blast wave so powerful, what are the casualties of this volcanic activity, and most importantly, was it the last eruption? Eruption. What happened to the island where the volcano is located? The islands that form Tonga lie along a subduction zone where one part of the Earth's crust dips under another. There's regular volcanic activity. In late 2014 and early 2015, layers of magma and ash formed a platform. It rose up out of the sea and filled the space between two uninhabited islands. A new island was formed, known as Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai. Scientists later discovered that beneath the water column, there was a huge caldera, a crater-like trench with a diameter of approximately 5 kilometers. Minor eruptions of previous years occurred mainly at the caldera's edge, but the latest one came from the caldera itself. That's what made the blast so massive. Eventually, the island of Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai disappeared as suddenly as it appeared. Why didn't seawater cool the volcano? volcano down. The point is that if magma rises into seawater slowly, even at temperatures of about 1,200 degrees Celsius, a thin film of steam forms between the magma and water. This provides a layer of insulation to allow the outer surface of the magma to cool. But this process doesn't work when magma is blasted out of the ground full of volcanic gas. In this case, when magma enters the water rapidly, any steam layers are quickly disrupted, bringing hot magma in direct contact with cold water. A highly violent chemical explosion occurs, and it affects everything around it, as it happened in January. What happened to the nearby islands? No more than 40 islands in Tonga are inhabited. Those not affected by the blast were affected by the tsunami. Atata and Mongo were flooded the most. Severe damage was done to the coastal part of Tonga's capital, Nuku'alofa. The tsunami waves carried an additional threat – shards, debris, and stones. Later, the entire capital was covered with a two-centimeter layer of ash. Almost immediately after the eruption, one of the most densely populated populated islands of Tonga Tapu disappeared in a cloud of ashes, as a pillar of dust and stones rose 39 kilometers into the air. Satellite images of the island of Nomuka showed that one-fifth of the buildings were damaged. The Tongan Maritime Force, which was sent to the Haapai Islands, reported a tsunami up to 10 meters high. The waves spread out 500 meters inland. Fua Amotu International Airport was covered in dust and mud so much that people were trying to clear the debris from the runway by hand. But even at their best, it would be of little use because the clouds made it impossible to fly. However, the full extent of the tragedy is not yet clear, as communication with the islands of Tonga has been lost. What happened to the people? The islands of Tonga are interconnected by a communication network. However, all communications stopped shortly after the explosion as some submarine cables appeared to be damaged. Despite that, in the first days after the event, there were 150 missing persons reported. All those people were residents of Atata and Mongo that were literally washed away by the tsunami. The king was evacuated from the royal palace to his villa, while people on other islands made every effort to get to higher ground by cars, creating traffic jams. 
two days after the eruption, Tongan officials asked for help to provide their citizens with fresh drinking water and food. But providing humanitarian assistance on such a vast scale at once was extremely difficult. The United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs indicated that getting runways cleared would take several days. The New Zealand Ministry of Foreign Affairs sent two ships with abundant water, research teams, and a helicopter. Among those involved in rescue operations were International Red Cross and Red Crescent Movement, Tear Fund, and Oxfam. The latter installed filtering units in Tonga Tapu that can turn salt water into drinking water. This greatly relieved the local population, as all drinking water was contaminated with ash. Other governments joined in the rescue of Tonga, Fiji, Japan, China, Singapore, Australia. It would be strange if they didn't, because the eruption affected the entire planet. What happened to the planet? The blast wave has ripped through Earth at least twice. The tsunami struck Fiji, American Samoa, Vanuatu, New Zealand, Japan, the United States, Chile, and Peru. At least two people died in Peru when the coast was hit by a wave two meters high. They just didn't have time to get out of the car. The infrastructure in the Fiji Islands was severely damaged. Japanese cities lost dozens of ships and one person drowned during the evacuation. Several Californians were swept away by waves after ignoring warnings from the authorities. The ash cloud reached Queensland in Australia, creating a terrifying and breathtaking sunrise. In addition, meteorologists on the other side of the Earth in Europe reported spikes in atmospheric pressure. It didn't affect the weather or the well-being of the European population. However, it helped calculate the blast wave velocity, and it was 1,100 kilometers per hour. Scientists can't explain such a huge explosive power by magma water interactions alone. They believe enormous amounts of fresh, gas-charged magma have erupted from the caldera. This indicates that the massive Hunga caldera has now truly awoken. Its activity also explains the tsunami. Indeed, volcanoes usually trigger earthquakes, but not waves. It's too soon to tell whether this explosion is the climax of the eruption. However, depositional sequences of previous eruptions show each of a thousand-year major caldera eruption episodes involved many separate explosion events. If it turns out it wasn't the last blast, and an even more powerful eruption will follow, who knows what will happen? Perhaps the climate on Earth will change dramatically. Or maybe… write your thoughts in the comments.